Man, the enemy team has a solid backline. Thankfully, I have this watch that allows me to fake my death. To get behind them, I must be smart with how I use it to make sure the enemy team doesn't suspect. The Dead Ringer. Spy's most hated watch, and part of Spy's most hated loadout. And as a spy main myself, I'm going to say, yeah, it's hated for a good reason. But in case you don't know how it works, here's the quick rundown. Instead of being able to cloak normally, right clicking raises the dead ringer. If you take damage with it raised, you will cloak instantly and the game will fake your death by dropping a fake corpse, leaving a fake death message, and removing any burns or bleeds. The hit that activates it will have a 75% damage reduction and a 65% damage reduction while cloaked that decays to 20% over 3 seconds. It also gives you a 3 second speed boost and doesn't flicker upon enemy contact for the first 3 seconds of the cloak. You also cannot recharge the cloak with ammo packs. A full cloak meter is required to be able to raise the dead ringer, and it instantly loses 50% cloak upon activation. Okay cool, I know how it works now, but why is it so hated? Well to be honest, the actual concept of this weapon is so goddamn cool! Disguises were already an immensely cool and creative mechanic, but add on to that the ability to fake your death? We're so used to this weapon now, but that is still an extremely cool concept. It plays so well into the entire identity of Spy, being able to trick and deceive enemy players. Not only could they not know where you are or if their teammates are to be trusted, but they potentially can't trust if you actually died. It's such a cool concept, and yet, it's almost never used that way. If you've ever played against a Dead Ringer spy in the past few years, you've most likely run into the infamous Kunai Trickstab playstyle. Professional guide to the Dead Ringer meta. 1. Disguise as Scout. 2. Tank the damage and be blatant, don't even try fake your death. And 3. Trickstab at every possible opportunity. But why? Why is it like this? Well, when using stock or the cloak and dagger, you have to carefully avoid detection while invisible, by using your map knowledge and movement. After that, you need to decloak in such a scenario that you can remain unnoticed and get a kill. This gameplay rewards good positioning with kills, and you'll often have to adapt and change your paths as the game progresses or players try to catch you out. If you screw up, you die or pull off a clutch escape. Then there's the Dead Ringer, which just allows you to get away with bad positioning. It doesn't matter that you got caught out and got noticed by the entire enemy team, just right click and you get a massive damage resistance and even a speed boost on top of that. In fact, it doesn't just allow you to get away with bad positioning, it straight up rewards it. The enemy team is punished for trying to kill you. That's the main reason this weapon is so hated. Like, sure, trick stabs are hated as well, but if the enemy spy is clearly waiting for you to follow him up a slope, and you follow him up said slope, and you get stair stabbed, that's on you. But even if you know the enemy spy wants you to damage him so he can pop Dead Ringer, how else are you supposed to kill him? Show him a picture of touching grass yes. and hope he dies of a seizure? No. Also, yes, I'm aware that backstabs, the enforcer, and death pits can pierce the dead ringer, but you most often don't have those options. The speed boost he gets because of this bad positioning is the same as the main upside of the Big Earner, a widely considered well-balanced spy weapon with a speed boost that actually rewards good positioning. Now, I'm not saying that weapons that are focused on enhancing your ability to escape bad situations are bad design. Let's take a look at a much more well-designed weapon the escape plan. The way this weapon works is when you pull it out, 
you get a speed boost relative to how low your health is. Lower health means higher speed. However, doing so also reduces healing from medics and marks you for death, making you take 35% more damage. The marked for death effect persists for 3 seconds after putting it away. Now, okay, so this weapon also rewards you for taking damage with a speed boost. One that isn't even on a timer. Well, yes, but unlike the Dead Ringer, instead of giving you damage resistance on top of that, it makes you take more damage when you try to use it. The whole dynamic of this weapon is that it relies on your ability to use that speed boost to avoid taking further damage. If you pull it out in the middle of taking damage, it just gets you killed faster. Especially if it's a pyro. Using it at an incorrect time gets you punished, but using it correctly can save your life. Or get you back into another fight quicker as you can easily retreat to a health pack to heal. The Dead Ringer? Nah. Pull it out in the middle of taking damage and it will give you a resistance to said damage alongside a speed boost with no consequence. You see the problem? Now, okay, it's not like this weapon doesn't have legitimate weaknesses, because it does. Let's talk about that. The weaknesses of the Dead Ringer simply just boil down to the fact it's not the Stockwatch or Cloak and Dagger. Both are capable of completely concealing when you're going to show up. The Dead Ringer requires damage to Cloak, and if players are good at detecting the fake death, the kill feed can straight up broadcast when the spy is coming. Attention, enemy team. I have just feigned death and my arrival is imminent, and I will attempt to trick stab you. This especially sticks out in Highlander lobbies or just games with lots of good players. They can track the position of the Dead Ringer spy much easier, and the much more distinct decloak sound can alert them that one is present. As opposed to the other two watches, you can cloak before even entering line of sight giving enemy players much less information to work with for your whereabouts. And the enemy team can't clearly tell which of those two watches you're using. Also, because the cloak is instant, it doesn't give the same opportunities for mind games that the other watches can. If you've seen the spy psychology on cloak, you know about the concept of illusions, where you create a projection in the enemy's head of where you want them to think you've gone, when in reality, you change direction the moment your cloak completed, throwing them way off your scent. While it is technically possible to create an illusion with the Dead Ringer due to the disguise smoke glitch, that leads us into our other big weakness. The psychological one. As said earlier in this video, the Dead Ringer allows you to get away with bad positioning and dumb plays. But spies who use it too much get a little bit too complacent with that fact. And they can become. predictable. If you begin to catch on to their habits, you can completely dominate them by predicting where they'll go. And even outside of predicting where they'll go when they feign death, their other attacks can become incredibly telegraphed. Take this obvious spy that I've killed a couple times already because I've caught onto him. I walk closer to where he is, pretending to not notice him. Surely, he doesn't fall for this obvious bait and jump right to his death and nope, he falls for it. Or what about this spy, who can't seem to get me because I remembered that spy has a gun. So he shifts his attention to this engineer. But he becomes so caught up in trying to get this engineer to come close to him, who's clearly not falling for it, that he completely forgets about the thing right behind him that's capable of piercing his dead ringer. In fact, as mentioned in my Spy as a Gun video, the Enforcer bypasses the damage resistances of the dead ringer and can one shot dead ringer kunai spies at 70 health. These predictable habits are why I tell new players to stay well away from the dead ringer, because you don't want to develop these habits early on. I'm very glad I stopped using the Dead Ringer many years ago, and that was way before the Jungle Inferno nerf. The Dead Ringer is an awesome concept, the execution, not so great. Even with the nerfs and changes it's gone through, it's still a questionably designed weapon. 
it rewards sloppy play and puts you in a predictable mindset. If it were to be changed to fix these problems, it would need to somehow be able to fake being the stock watch like the cloak and dagger can, and or have repercussions for using the feigned death mindlessly or at a bad time. I don't want to fall into these habits myself, and that's why I refuse to use the Dead Ringer. At least, outside of very specific and stupid scenarios. Touching it all, something. Mmm. Mmm. ASMR voice.